Today I'm talking about how to create your own magical sigil. And there are basically three steps to the process. One is gathering the inspiration and the creative energy you need for your spell work. The second is your spell work. And the third is activating the power of your sigil. But before we get into that, let's just talk about what a sigil is. It's basically a magic symbol. So it's any kind of symbol like the pentacle or, you know, in the Christian tradition, a cross, that's, that's meant to have magical power and to perform an act of magic. Uh, since we have CV19 happening here in 2020, I just thought it would be a really good time for people to be able to create their own magic sigils. It's my belief that authentic magic, magic that comes out of us, is, is more powerful than traditional magic. So I like to empower people to do their own creative work, their own emotional work. One of the first big parts of the process is going to be gathering together uh, materials that you can use for inspiration during your spell work. So prior to your spell work beginning, you want to collect images, whether you're collecting them mentally or physically, it doesn't matter. I personally am biased towards having something physical. So a uh, couple ways that you can collect these images. First of all, if anything is coming to mind, that's significant to begin with. If you can find a physical manifestation of any images that are coming to mind, that would be a great help for your spell work if you can print it up and look at it in some way. Second of all, if you need to find inspiration, uh, one thing that you can do is a short pilgrimage. So find a little patch of nature somewhere that's easy for you to access and go for an intentional walk through it where you're really receptive to the shapes or the images or the things on your walk. Give yourself a moment to register whenever one of them comes to you and log it away in the back of your mind so that you'll have that moment available to you in your magic work. You can also use internet resources like Pinterest and print up things. I have a little sense of humor to a lot of my magic so I printed up some um, rather playful images that, that I wanted to have available to me during my spell work. If you're a scrapbooker or have a recycle bin like I do, you can use uh, magazine images. Another form of images that some people like to use are words, so you can actually write words out on a page so that you have the, the letters there. Symbols are, are valuable to make symbols out of. So all these things are possible sources of inspiration, but give yourself a little bit of time and collect your inspiration before we begin our actual spell work. The next step in the process is to do the magic that creates the sigil. And before we do this, we need just a couple more things, which is something, um, sketching material, so uh, something to write with and some paper to write on. And then find a safe space to do your work. If you're comfortable casting a magical circle, I recommend that. If not, don't let that stop you. It's all right to work yourself into a meditative state in any quiet, safe place where you won't be disturbed. To create the sigil, you're just basically making it up, but you're doing it in a trance state where you can tap into your subconscious for guidance. This is an open-eyed trance with a soft gaze. So start just by looking at your images and using them as inspiration. And when you find one that calls to you, take a line or two from the part that feels significant and draw it onto your paper. And you might feel yourself lingering on one image or you might find that you're searching for a favorite or you might see like a line or shape that appeals to you inside of an image. And that's exactly what you're looking for. Just anything that feels significant that you can pull out and draw on your sketch paper. After you have your first line or shape, ask yourself, am I done? You might be. If not, then keep searching until you find another line or image that appeals to you. And at this point, you're just worried about finding the information that you're going to use in your sigil. You don't have to worry about how it's going to go together. Now if you get to four or five images and you're still pulling information out, it might be that you missed the moment where you needed to stop. If that's the case, don't worry about it. Just use the first two pieces that you pulled out. Once you have your lines and shapes, you play around with how they interact and you can draw them several times on different sheets of paper until you get one that feels right. And again, you don't have to worry about making it pretty at this point because when you're not in trance, you can totally use your conscious mind to sort of refine it and make it into something that's more pretty. 
If your sigil is simple and you're really confident that you can remember it, then you could go ahead and activate it while you're in your trance state. Personally, I'm going to take myself out of trance and make sure I copy it down before I do that. There are different ways that you can activate your sigil, but for the sake of keeping things simple, I'm just going to offer you my favorite, which is to burn it. That's why I write it down before I do this. And again, you just go into a magic circle trance type of state like you use to create it. That's basic to any magical working.